guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Fletcher Nelson. I am a third grade teacher in Minnesota. I have been good at making weekly vlogs and I took a couple weeks off. We had homecoming week, which was just a little chaotic. This week I had three volleyball games during the week and it just was busy. So I did not have time to talk about what we, what's going on, but we're back. It's October. We're on what, week five, maybe six? I don't even know, but um, let's uh, chat about what it did or what we did. Today it is Monday, October 7th and um, it is the end of the day, so I'll talk, talk about what we did it too. Since the last video, I switched up my schedule a little bit. Um, there was a day I needed to take a half day because of volleyball, we had an away game, so I needed a sub in the afternoon. And I decided to do my math in the morning because our curriculum, it's kind of hard for a sub just to come in and know what to teach. Um, so I did the math in the morning and I really liked it. So we have done that for the last few days and it's gone really well. So we started our day with math today. We finished up our first unit uh, probably last week. Beginning of last week's, we are started our second unit, which is on multiplication. We have talked about a few strategies on how to multiply. And right now we're really just looking at focusing on like repeated addition and the skip counting for right now. Um, when they're solving problems, like in their workbooks, we're also obviously are like drawing pictures and stuff. Like today there was one where it was like, hey, if they have six strawberry plants and there's five strawberries in each plant, how many are there? So we talked about how like drawing that out is a great strategy as well. So making those equal equal groups and using images to kind of help show that. So that's been our math focus lately. It's just that introduction to multiplication. Reading our read alouds this week are um, expository nonfiction. So today we read hottest, coldest, highest, and deepest. And that was our, um, our read. We also have spent time talking about point of view for the last couple of weeks and identifying that. So they added that um, anchor chart and have answered a few questions on point of view into their reading, interactive reading notebook today. So that was good as well. So an updated wall of wisdom. We have theme, we have point of view, we have genre. Hit our reading stamina goal. Um, and then obviously our indoor recess stuff. Our multiplication strategies are still there and our affix bank is still over here. So with math, our um, number corner, this is part of our curriculum is focusing on geometry. So each day we flip over another shape. Obviously we didn't do it for the weekend or today, oops. And then we are just um, making observations each day. So shape, color, LS we'll get to eventually, that's lines of symmetry, but we don't check those right away. And then we're making other observations about each shape each day. And in science, we did a bean lab last week and those are starting to sprout. So we're watering them with different things. So water, club soda, and Sprite. So, so far, club soda ones have started to sprout along with water, but um, the Sprite ones have not sprouted at all yet. So we are looking at those and making observations on these. Otherwise, we had our counselor come in today. This um, She comes in every other week. So she was in today talking about the zones of regulation and um, we have a field trip tomorrow. So that will be our day tomorrow. So I'm reviewing expectations on the field trip as well. So how was our Monday? It's a pretty good day. Just, there's still just so much touching. That's my biggest pet peeve right now is gonna be the touching. Just like, you don't need to touch people in line at the carpet while you're working. So if we can get through that, we'll be, we'll be great. But anyways, uh, field trip tomorrow. I'll try to check in at the end of the day, but we'll see. So I'm back though. So see ya, see ya. Good morning. It is Thursday, October 10th, and I haven't hopped on since Monday. So let me just kind of fill you in on What's been going on this week? I literally feel like every week I say, it's been a really busy week. We've had a lot of stuff going on to throw off our schedule, but that's, it's true again. On Tuesday, we had the field trip, like I said. I'll throw in some pictures here because I have some without kids' faces in it, but it was a great day. We had beautiful fall weather, especially for Minnesota, to be outside all day. It actually got a little warm in the afternoon, but it was, it was so nice. And the thing I love about this field trip is we go on it three times. We go in the fall, the winter, and the spring. So they get to see how the place changes in each season. And it's actually part of our science standards as well. So um, while we're out there, they're learning about decomposers. They learned about how animals are preparing for winter. They um, learn about like what a cache is after learning how some animals prepare for winter. And then we go like for a hike and see the different ways different animals store caches of food for the winter. Um, let's see what else. In the afternoon, they learn how to use a compass and they kind of do like a little scavenger hunt using a compass having to um, either turn to like a cardinal direction or it might be like um, head at 220 degrees for 15 steps, then head 80 degrees for 12 steps and they're finding different animals out there. And then lastly, they learned about different types of trees and 
um, how to identify those trees. So it's a full day of learning, but it is um, it's a good out day, outdoor learning day. And we learn new stuff every time, so in the winter we will learn more about, um, you know, I can't remember offhand, but every time we've, we learn new things each time we go out there. So we will head out again in the winter. But So yesterday, or Tuesday was great. It just, Tuesday field trip, it wasn't ideal, but it was the only time we could um, make it work. And actually, like, I'm a little red. I got a little sunburn just from being out in the sun. It was, like, not that hot, so that's a little embarrassing. But it was it was a good day. And then yesterday I did not hop on because we, let's see, in the morning we had fire safety and we also had our vision and hearing screening. We met with our first grade buddies and then a, I believe, I believe it was a kindergartner, pulled the fire alarm at like five minutes before dismissal. I was literally handing out stuff. Um, our first set of dismissal, actually it was like a minute or two before the first, like the early buses were going to leave. So everyone had to evacuate the building, and that was just chaotic. And then I got a haircut, so I did not hop on yesterday, but I can fill you in on what we did. So in the morning, our math um, fit in between fire safety and all those other things. We introduced a game, part of our cur curriculum called Loops and Groups. So we played up on the smart board, but it's a two-player game, so the first time we play, it, we did the class versus me. So the class was recording theirs up on the, the Promethean board, and I did mine on the board. So all you do is you have five rounds, and you just roll a die that's one through six. Um, you could go higher, but since we're just beginning multiplication, ours is just one through six. The first roll is how many loops you're making, or how many circles. And the second one is the number in each group. So on my first time, I rolled a five, so I made my five loops. And then in my, or my second row was a six, so I did six in each loop, so groups of six. And then I write the equation. Five times six equals 30. And I really like using five, so I showed my class, like, I'm putting five and then one, because then when I count, I can go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So I just showed them how I like to make my groups in there. So you, we just went back and forth taking turns, and the next time I did one and a one, so you can just kind of see. And then at the end, you take your equations and you add up the products to find your total sum, and whoever has the highest sum wins. A pretty simple game, but it won, especially since we are just starting multiplication. A good way to introduce them to it, the visuals, them making the loops and the groups, so making out equal groups. Um, so we will probably try to find some time today for them to play that with a partner since we played as a whole group today. But that's honestly all we had time for yesterday with math with um, having fire safety in the morning as well because I'm doing my math in the morning. So that is all we were able to do for math. All right, for reading yesterday, um, they did a ReadWorks article. I like doing that just for some different skill practice and comprehension practice, like reading a passage and answering questions. Um, so they did that, and then they also, we've been working on some opinion writing. This is my example. Um, the one they're doing, I do have this on TPT, by the way, but they're doing, would you rather be able to fly or breathe underwater? But I did my example as we were kind of going over how to structure this with a different would you rather question. So I did winter or summer. So last week I had brainstormed my ideas. Um, we also made our outline last week, and now today they turned it, or yesterday they turned it into a paragraph, or at least started that process. So here was mine just talking about, hey, having a topic sentence, and then I added in some transition words, and then made each reason and each example a sentence. So by the end of the year, I would like us to have like five paragraphs, like an introduction, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. But to start the year, we're focusing just on one paragraph. So they worked on that yesterday. And then I've been throwing in some um, phonemic awareness stuff. So just before lunch, we um, right now I was saying the syllables, and then they were blending it together to find the word. So we did some of this, which, which is just a Hegarty phonemic awareness um, book. But just especially I feel like for like their spelling, we did sounds where it was focusing on like the beginning, middle, or ending sound, and um, we've talked about like counting the sounds in the word. So just trying to get them to like listen to the sounds, so when they're spelling, they're not 
needing as much help and aren't just skipping over whole chunks of words. So we've been working that in every once in a while when we have a few minutes. And then we met our first grade buddies for the first time. So in our school we do like kindergarten is buddies with fifth grade, fourth grade is buddies with second grade, and then third grade is buddies with first grade. And it really depends how often you want to meet with them. You just kind of decide that with the other teacher. Um, I've never been real consistent, but I think this class this year will be motivated by this and like the focus of being the bigger buddy and needing to be a good role model I think will be good for them. So yesterday we just met and played on the playground and I invited them back in a couple weeks to do um, some sort of a Halloween activity in our room. So maybe it'll be bingo or maybe we'll find an art activity to do with them or something. But um, it's just kind of a good way to get kids to know other kids in the building and for them to, I don't know, for my kids to really focus on being a good role model because you never know when your first grade buddy might see you. So we also did that yesterday and then that was our day. Now today we have another um, kind of a wrench in our schedule. We have picture day today. That doesn't take too long. Usually I'm like, I'd say probably like 15 to 20 minutes per class. So that won't throw things off too much. Um, but then I'm gone this afternoon because we have an away volleyball game. So I won't hop on at the end of the day today at all, but I will fill you in on what how things went today, um, tomorrow on Friday. So I guess that's what we got going. And I got my nice cheetah shirt on for my picture today. So that's it. That's all I got. Um, trying to get back in the habit of this. So I'll I'll be playing catch up right now. But one day I'll be better. So okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Hello, happy Friday, it's the end of the day. I gotta make this quick because I need to run to practice, but I'm gonna check in and let you know what we did today very quickly. So again, I'm really liking math in the morning, so I'm gonna show you what we did yesterday and today out of our curriculum. All right, so the two lessons involved this clownfish that's named Chloe. Chloe the clownfish is, they talk about how in real life, clownfish are four to seven inches long. So they're saying that Chloe is going to be four inches long in this picture, and then what students were to do is estimate how long other animals would be based off of Chloe's length. So if you know that Chloe's four inches, then the sea anemone might be eight inches, you might say, because it looks like it's two Chloe's. So they used Chloe as a ruler, essentially, and they were kind of counting by fours. So, you know, if they thought this trigger fish would be three Chloe's, that would be, you know, four times three, so four, three times. So that was kind of the first day and they ended up getting another picture and on here, um, I didn't make these slides, but we, um, like they could, you could drag these to kind of model measuring and using Chloe to measure other items in the picture. And they eventually did some on their own of just like how many Chloe's would that um, animal be and how long you think it would be. So obviously it's not an exact answer, but it was just estimating, I guess. And then today kind of, because that was yesterday, and then today kind of went off of that, using Chloe again. So it was like, uh, Chloe swam by a sea anemone that was two times as big as her. How long was the sea anemone? So you'd be like eight. And then the next question would be like, all right, if this um, a sea turtle swam by the sea, that's three times as big as the sea anemone, how long is that? So using Chloe kind of led into the... Um, being able for them to understand when you say something's two times as big or five times as big. Because now we know, okay, if it's five times as big, that means it's five Chloe's. So it's a little confusing at first, but I think it does help them understand, like when you say something's three times bigger, they understand that that means that it's three of that item. Like it's three, it's three Chloe's or whatever it is. So um, that was what yesterday and today was for math. And then we have conferences next week. We're doing them earlier this year since we didn't get to do our scheduled back to school open house like we used to do. Um, so we did them earlier. That way we can kind of chat more about behavior and what we've seen so far. So I, we did a little conference prep just like them going over their work habits. And then this afternoon for reading, we did a scholastic news and um, talked a little bit about text features and they read a article and answered some questions. And then we ended with our Laker time, which is our um, kind of Friday fun across the grade level. So it was a busy week. It was a quick week, but it also was a long week. So that's kind of what I got this week. I'll be hopefully better next week. Uh, my team will be done 
so I won't have to like rush off to practice. I'll still help with varsity, but my team will be done, so I won't have to leave as quick so I can spend a little, more, a little bit more time talking about what we're doing. But anyways, at least I'm back this week and I'm posting a video. So thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you next time. Goodbye.